our Heavenly Father, that is our intention tonight. We have assembled together to only believe, just believe the Lord Jesus. There are those here tonight who are sick and afflicted. And we have dedicated our, our, our service tonight to the healing of the sick and broken body. Uh, now, as the singer just sang that beautiful hymn, Then Jesus Came. May you come on the scene for us tonight, Lord, oh, and right. heal all that's Amen. afflicted. There won't be a feeble person in our midst tonight. Amen. Grant it, Lord, and help us as we look to the Word now to find faith sufficient for this hour. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's a pair of glasses here that someone has lost has been found in the church. If anybody, if they belong to you, or they're, you're on the platform, on the pulpit. <clears throat> now, I know that many are working, and they have to go home early, and so I won't speak very long, and then have a prayer line to pray for the sick. That gives me an opportunity to, to catch up, and some of the emergencies have just been in the room catching just now for coming in. And this afternoon, some of them, of course, are very, very bad and violent. I've been making the calls to, and praying for the sick. Seeing the hand of our Lord Jesus heal the sick and the afflicted. Amen. how wonderful He is. Now, not too often do we get into these healing services, because usually we, uh, the Holy Spirit will come around if he's in the emergency case and desert it right quick and pick it out and say something about it. And then the rest of them, uh, we just, maybe it's nothing too bad, so we just pass it on by. But I thought being here twice today, it should be that we dedicate one service for a prayer for the sick. <clears throat> I believe in healing the sick. I believe it is a Bible command. And we cannot preach that without the full gospel without including that. Now, it's possible. I don't know yet. I haven't called home yet tonight. It may be possible that next Sunday I'd be through here again. And if you, if you don't hear from us this week, if Billy don't let you know, he'll know a little later on in the week. If you don't hear, then we'll be here again next Sunday because that gives you a labor day, you see, to rest up and uh, so, or to get home on. See? And so we'll try the Lord willing. Now, if you don't hear, I think Billy drops your card or tells you through the service of some way. So if he doesn't call you, then I'm coming back for, for this next coming Sunday. Brother Neville just saw it. One yeah. of the <laughs> glasses belong to some lady. He's coming. Oh, that's fine. If anybody wants to know, this little Collins here, and during the time of the seven seals, the doctor had told that little boy it was rheumatic fever. That he had to lay on his back and drink through a tube. That that was it. And the father and mother brought him to the home and set him in the room. Prayed for him, and the Lord Jesus healed him so completely, he went back to school, and the authorities called him in about it. So they called the specialist who was waiting on him, and she couldn't believe he couldn't believe such a thing as that, and they brought the boy down for a test, and he was perfectly normal as well. Then Jesus came. <laughs> the tempter's power is then broken. You know, strange thing, I was going to ask someone to sing that song tonight, and as I was ministering in the room there, here comes someone singing it. Hey, 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 and Jesus came. If that wasn't saying, I was going to ask someone to sing it before I, I spoke tonight. So uh, he works all the things hey. right. Now, many of you will be waiting over to in the morning. It's got a long distance to go. And I, I appreciate you. That, that effort. Some of you will drive home tonight because you got to go to work by daylight in the morning. And I, I know it's hard. And then when I think and see that, I get spells too, you know. I get moody. I get to a spot to where I, what gets me is where I get to those spells when I get all overworked. And Satan comes tell me, why nobody cares for you? You really haven't got a friend in the world, see? And so, uh, remember, I'm not immune from temptation. I got to overcome that. Then when I look back and see something like this, I put it right back in his face and say, what about that? <laughs> that helps me to overcome. What about that? 
like a certain friend of mine sitting in, in the meeting here, there was a, a, a clan, kind of a, a clan that doesn't believe in divine healing, come to this young fellow uh, recently and said to him, that stuff that they're preaching there about that divine healing, there's nothing to it. And this man lives in Kentucky right near an old woman that, when we was at Acton Campgrounds, that was dying with cancer. And her sister came to the meeting that night with a handkerchief in her purse that she had taken. And uh, the Holy Spirit called out the woman back there, and I'd never been in that country before, and told her that she had a handkerchief in her purse that she had there. She took from home, and her sister was up on a certain ridge there, dying with cancer of the stomach. The doctors give her up. And I said, go put the handkerchief upon the woman, for thus saith the Lord, she shall live. And that's the night the neighbors up there thought they had the Salvation Army when Brother Ben got up there. <laughs> and, uh, and then that lady was so perfectly healed until she does her own work and the neighbors work. So this young man, knowing that, he said, then explain her case. Yeah, <laughs> explain, you know she had cancer. She's here in love when the doctors performed the operation and just simply turned sort of put her back and nothing can be done. And now she's perfectly normal. Well, then explain that. That's settled. <laughs> you know, when the Bible said, and they could say nothing amiss because the man was standing right in their midst on who the miracle was done. That's where we, it puts Satan to a shame, doesn't it? The man was standing there as the miracle was performed on. Does God raise the dead? Here says the man right here raised the dead. Amen. God healed the sick. Oh my, the hands could just go everywhere. God heals the sick. And we know he's the great, the great I am. Not the great I was or will be. I am. I am. That's ever present, everywhere, all time. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, the hurry, let's turn now into the blessed Bible. I want to read a, a passage that, that used to just turn me around when I read it. And I want to have a prayer line tonight and pray for everybody that wants to be prayed for. And now we're going to turn to Mark, St. Mark, the 11th chapter of St. Mark. And we're going to begin to read about the, the 22nd verse of the 11th chapter of St. Mark. And many of you know this scripture. It's very familiar. It was a scripture I was thinking on uh, Brother Russell, when those, when he spoke to me and said about those squirrels, and they, that was just the very scripture I was thinking of. It's always been a puzzle. He said, "If ye say, not if I say, if you say." Now let us read. Jesus answering said unto them, "Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain." Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Amen. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, that your Father also, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your uh, Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, faith is based on forgiveness then. <laughs> And then, as we said this morning, trying to get the church into the place to where we could really see apostolic times moving among us. That's what we all hunger. And it's just laying right at the door. We see it. But we want to see more of it. We want it such a flow that it'll, it'll be a help to us to flow out to others. Remember Jesus, as we had in the lesson this morning, he never used his power for himself. 
He used it for others. That's what it was sent for. And you think sometimes, why would a man that was so full of power like him would have ever be sick? Yes, sir. I've read in some book somewhere where when he raised up that boy, the widow's son from Nain, I believe the prince of the house of David, that he stepped on a rock and groaned with a headache. He bore our infirmities. Bear means to pack them. See? He bore, and he had all things in, like we have. He had sickness. He had temptations. He had troubles. He had frustrations, just as we have, because he had to be the right kind of a mediator. So he had to be partakers, the husband, and of the fruit before he would know. Amen. The woman at the well, and many things. See, if we look right into the scripture. I want to say that I believe every scripture has ever been up to be true. There's critics today that don't want to believe that. A critic once said that when Jesus sent those disciples to where that colt was tied, or two ways met, that he prearranged that for where that colt was tied. See, they don't understand that God prearranged it. God told me other day with Brother Dow here that I would shake his hand on the street again. Now, it's very strange. I wasn't here that morning. But two minutes longer, or a minute longer, I had not met him on the street, but I stepped off of the car just in time to shake his hand when he was coming in on the street. He didn't know me. He had his glasses off. He couldn't see me. When he heard my voice, he started crying. What was it? Usually he doesn't do that, but it was the answer to what was told him up there under the oxygen tent he would do it. I said, you're also set in the church again. His heart's desire. When he was having a Chicago meeting, he wanted to come to that meeting. His heart was for it. I sent him a telegram and greetings for us and the children. Told him we was praying that he could get well right quick. And a loving brother who visited him said that he, he just wanted to come so bad. But here he's set tonight. With it. See, that was not prearranged. The same God arranged it. He makes everything work perfectly on the dot. A critic once said that no wonder Jesus could take five loaves and feed five thousand. Said the loaves were bigger in that day, and he just cut each loaf to feed a thousand. I give you to understand, a little boy had it in his lunch. <laughs> A little child packed up five loaves of bread that could feed five thousand people in these folks. Then what about the twelve basket folks taking that bag? Amen. Oh, they just, that's just critics. That's all it is. That doesn't change God's word. It's just the same. It moves on. Now, we want to speak now upon faith and a different type of faith. Perfect faith. That's a great thing. Now, a faith. We're told in the Bible, faith cometh by hearing. Now, you cannot be saved without faith. And faith is something that you have to believe is there, that really nothing else will declare it's there but faith. Now, I'm trying to bring faith to you so that you can be ready for this prayer line in the next few minutes. Now, faith... He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And it's impossible to to please God without faith. You cannot please him. And if you say you believe God, you have never seen him. See? So then you've got to believe it by faith. And if you could see him, it would be no more faith. See? Anything that the senses declare is no more faith. It's a scientific fact. See? It's not no more faith, but you have to accept him by faith. And he that cometh to God must believe God, and faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. See, you must first believe this is God's word. And you must come to God by the word. Amen. See, just take the word, what it says, and that's right. Everything else contrary to it is not right. right. Abraham had to believe just what that voice told him. 
And when he was 100 years old, 25 years later, he was stronger believing than he was 25 years ago when it was given to him. <laughs> he believed it. And he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, giving praise to God, knowing that he was able to perform what he promised. That's the way everyone must be that way. You must come with an unfailing faith, believing that God made the promise. But now you have to be in a position to have that faith, and that's what we're going to talk on. To receive that faith. In Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, we are told that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, here's where many people fail to receive their healing or what they're asking for because they take faith to be something that it is not. See, they don't believe it. it it's, um, it it's not a, uh, imagination. It is a actual substance. Yeah. Now, listen close. See? It is not what you imagine. It's just as real to you as any sense of your body will declare anything else. It's just as real as my eyes says this is a piece of paper. It's just as real as to say that that, that is a lie. It's just as real as to say I feel my coat. It's just as real as to, as I hear that baby talking uh, there or making its noise. See? It's just that real as music playing. It's just as real as I taste anything in my mouth. It is that real, only you can't show it to somebody else. You have it alone. Amen. Amen. It's yours. Faith is the substance. Amen. See? It's not just a myth. So many people call now these are real deep lessons. And I'll catch the top of it and then you dig down in it. See? Notice, it is something that you possess. Man. Not imagination. If you really have it. It's just as real to you as any other thing that could be. It's just as real as, as you know that, that you're riding your automobile. It's just as real as you know that you're sitting in the church. It's just as real as you hear my voice. It is a substance, not an imagination, not an emotion, but something that you have. And it comes to you by hearing the Word of God in that only. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. That puts it back to where your faith then is not in some individual. It's not in a man. Not in an organization. It's not in a group of people. It's in God because God is the Word. Amen. Amen. Your faith is in God. Faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. Then when God, by His Word, not for what somebody else did, somebody else said, but by what God's Word said, He said, let every man's word be a lie and mine be true. Now, you see somebody else do something by a word act of God or promise of God, and many of them say, I can do that too. It's an imagination. And when they do, you find them wrecked up out there somewhere. Yes, not. It's got to be a substance. Now, that is potentially a faith. That is something that would bring you to a faith. It's potentially, like if you ask me for an oak tree and I give you an acorn. Potentially you have an oak tree, but it hasn't produced itself yet. But when it really brings itself out, it is an oak tree. Yes. And when you imagine that God does this, but when it's revealed to you, it's a faith then. A yes. perfect faith that cannot fail. Yes. That's the reason those visions are so, so tremendous to me. Because it's been proved right every time. Amen. See? And I know that he promised that. And he promised in his word. And here he comes and promises for this day. Therefore you know where you're standing when he says so. Amen. See? Amen. That gives me a faith because he never does nothing contrary to his written word. Right. See? And if it was contrary to the word, I couldn't have faith in it. 
brings it right back again to the Word. See? Faith in hearing the Word of God. You must hear the Word. God's Word is that all-sufficient Word. That's all you have need of is this Word. Now, faith being the substance, and in there we find out in Hebrews what faith was and what those did who had faith. See, there's many times that people have faith today and tomorrow they haven't got it. The next day there's something and something else. But when God wants anchors it, and you see it, there's nothing ever going to make you move from it. You're just poking, reaching, presuming, and presume this adventure without authority. You're just trying this and trying this and go to this one and run here and run there. You haven't got the faith yet. But when that is what we call faith. I, 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 excuse me. I want you to. I, I want you to get this now. We the church has got to lift itself in the power of God. How we're too close to the end now, and I believe the church is in condition where we can teach it a little deeper things and rub some of this make believe out. Amen. See, yeah. and get into something real. Yeah. See, it's got to be something that you know. If you say, uh, uh, Brother Branham, uh, that isn't a lie. Yet I know it's a lie. How do you know it's a lie? I'm looking at it. Well, how do you know that you could be wrong? My sight has always declared to me that that was lie. See? And that's the reason I believe those visions, because it's always declared to me the truth, because it comes from the Word. Amen. Amen. Then if he says it, that settles it. Now, when it's declared like that, there's no more guesswork. It's going to be. Then you hear it, thus saith the law. See, because it's, it's beyond the human thinking. It's up into the realms of the Lord's thinking. Amen. But you're standing here just as a vine, just as a branch producing the fruit that's in the vine. See, God uses Amen. man and man only. God doesn't use machinery. God doesn't use groups of man. God doesn't use organizations. God uses individuals. Amen. Always. Amen. Now, faith is the substance, and by it we understand all those things are done. It's not a, it's not a imagination. It is a substance, especially perfect faith. That's what I'm talking on tonight, getting to perfect faith. It is not an imagination. Now, other just people come and say, Oh, I got all faith. Oh, I sure have. Oh, you stand here for this, you see. See, your, your very actions prove that you haven't got what you're talking about. See? If you had faith, then why are you standing in the prayer line for? See? What do you do these things for? See, if you had perfect faith, you'd look right straight to God and believe it and walk away. You would, you would have no need of coming into a prayer line. You'd have no need of these things because your faith has done made it so. Yeah. See? Uh, what would be the use for me saying I got to put a shirt on? I got a shirt on. How do you know you got a shirt on? Well, I see it, feel it, and I know it's there. Well, that's just how real that when perfect faith takes the hold, there's Amen. no hold you don't need no more. Praise God. It's already done. You know it. Hallelujah. How do you know it? Faith tells me so. Amen. That's it. See? Do you get it now, one of these? That's perfect faith. Now, in other words, I'm venturing out. Well, I'll go. The Bible said, call the elders, let them go and want to pray over. I know I'll go. And, and you say, well, I'm going to be healed. See, you're making yourself. If, don't watch how you're going to make yourself. Just, just worked out. And then when he passed you, you say, oh, I, I still don't feel. Uh, see, there he was. You didn't have faith. Your genuine faith will do it right there. Your, your genuine faith will make it so real to you that... Look at that little woman with the blood issue. She said, if I can only touch the border of his garment, I'll be made well. Amen. And as soon as she did it, she said she felt within herself that her blood issue stopped. Amen. She actually Amen. believed it. And when she touched it, to prove that it stopped, it stopped, Jesus turned and said, who touched me? That's perfect faith. And that same perfect Faith tonight will touch Jesus Amen. Christ just as it did then. A woman come with a perfect faith for that time. Now, now we see, at first, the disciples didn't have this perfect faith. 
they didn't have it. Because they had Christ walking with them, but then afterwards Christ was in them. Amen. And so you see, it's hard then to have this perfect faith without the Holy Spirit. It has to bring it. It does. Now you say the disciples didn't have perfect faith? No. For they had an epileptic child there that they were trying to cast this devil out of him. And they couldn't do it. And the father seen Jesus coming and he said, We have brought my son to, to your disciples and they could not cure him. See? And afterwards, the disciples asked Jesus, saying, Why could not we cure him? And Jesus said, Because of the lack of faith and of your unbelief. That's right. Because of your unbelief, that's, I remember, they had the power. Jesus had given them power yes. to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and cast out devils just a few days before that. Yes. They had the power, but not the faith to use the power. Yes. Now, there's the brand tabernacle. There's yes. the church, the bride today. Yes. The Holy Spirit is here with the power. Amen. But you haven't got that faith to move it. Amen. Amen. See what I mean? Amen. Yeah. Amen. It takes faith to move it. Here, I've got a shell that I hand loaded. I know what it'll do by ballistics, like the word. But I've got to fire the gun. The fire has to get to the powder. The powder's got the power, but it's got to have the fire to light it off. Yeah. And the same thing, the powder's in the shell. <laughs> But it needs faith to charge it and no. throw it out. Uh, That's what it takes. See? Perfect faith to ignite the power of the Holy Spirit which we have now since He's come up on us. Faith to ignite to see great things uh, is to the faith, something that presents it to you with a heart full of joy you walk into the sick room knowing exactly what you're going to say. Amen. Walk in there and know what's going to happen. Something's already been revealed. And you know it. And you walk in in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up from there. Thus saith the Lord. There you are. That's perfect faith. If there's these 10 million people standing there saying it wouldn't happen, you know it's going to happen anyhow. Because you know it. It's going to happen. Regardless what anybody else says, you're the one who's got the faith. Could you imagine Joshua? He called the elders of Israel together and said, uh, Brethren, we are the servants of the Lord. I would like for you to say, uh, ask the Lord if it would be all right if, uh, if he'd give us a little more sunlight. See? And hold the sun a little while. No, he had need of it. And without prayer, without anything, he had need of it and he just commanded the sun. He said, Stand there! I have need, and I'll be in the service of the Lord. Yeah, and He sent me over here to do this job. And I'm doing the best I don't know how, and the enemy is routed. And they're out in here. If I let the sun go down, they'll get together and cause me more trouble. So stand still. Hey, and move, you hang there. Amen. Hey, man, and she hung there for 24 hours. Hey, hey, man. Man. Hey, now, if the world's turning, it holds it up. And the sun stay in the place and it don't run. What happened then? Amen. That's right. Amen. Now you make yourself an infidel. <laughs> if you say uh, this and then if you don't, you sure do fool science because they said the world will stop and drop. <laughs> so now what? <laughs> if you say God's word's not right, then you're an infidel. Amen. Yeah, but it happened. That's the main thing. Amen. I don't know the mechanics of it, but it happened. Amen. I don't know the mechanics of the Holy Ghost, but I know it fell on me. Hey, I, I can't tell the mechanics of it, but I know the blessings of it. That's, that's all I, I care to know about. It's the blessings of the Holy Ghost. And mechanics, he works out, that's his secret. This boy could not be healed because the disciples had power. Jesus gave them power to heal all manner of sickness, to cast out devils, to cleanse the lepers, and to raise the dead. And he gave them power. But they didn't have faith to operate the power that they had. Yeah, and then they questioned Jesus and said, Well, now, why couldn't we do it? Now, remember, they had the Word. And the Word was flesh then. And 
And the word told them, I give you power. Amen. Amen. I give you power. And they had the power. But they didn't have faith to operate the word that was in them. Amen. See what I mean? Yes. But Jesus had it. He was the word. And he had faith that what he said would happen. Yes. Amen. He said, oh, bring him here. <laughs> How long will I suffer you? He had faith with his power. How did he? He said, I can do nothing in myself. Why? Wow. He relied upon what he was. He relied in knowing that he was the Word. And he had faith in God, who made him the Word. He was God the Word. And it was in him, and that gave him faith because he understood his position. He knew what he was because the Scripture had said he was this. And here are the Scriptures tied in to prove that he was exactly what the Scripture said he would be, and he knew what he was. Therefore, he relied upon what God had made him. Amen. And if he did that, then can't we rely upon what God made us as believers? Amen. These Amen. signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. He had faith in what he was. And if you are a believer, you have faith in what you are. You are a believer. And if you've got faith in God, the Bible says over here, and, uh, if our... Uh, if our hearts condemn us, then we can't have faith. But if our hearts don't condemn us, then we have faith. Amen. We have confidence towards God. If you want to read that, found St. John 3.21. I got the scripture written down there. Now notice. Saint John, I mean 1 John 3.21. Uh, notice. If our hearts condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. But as long as you're doing things that's wrong, you can't have confidence towards God. Amen. Right. So you see, you can you automatically know that you're wrong. You automatically put yourself back here a sinner by knowing that you're wrong. But when your heart don't condemn you and you know you are a believer, and there's nothing between you and God, you can ask what you will Amen. and know that it'll be given. Amen. Because it's the word that's given to you, just like it was to those disciples. Now the only thing you have to do then is have faith in what you are. Amen. Have faith in what the Word says you are. Amen. And Jesus had faith in the Word of God that said what He was. It is written of me. Didn't David and the Psalms and the prophets and all of them speak of Him? I am the bread of life that comes from God out of heaven. Amen. I am the tree of life from the Garden of Eden. I am all these things. I am that I am. And He knew with that a perfect faith that He was the anointed Messiah that the Spirit of God was upon him. He said, Now I myself do nothing, but it's my faith in God. And God was in him, the Word made manifest. And when the Word of God comes in you, it's made manifest. Or you are a believer. See, and a believer is the faith of God that moves in you. You like that? I, I like when you, I like Amen. the teaching of where the, how to, uh, what faith really is. Knowing who he was. Without a shadow of doubt, he knew he was the Son of God. He knew it. For the Word identified. The Word of God identified who he was. He said, if I do not the works of my Father, then don't believe me. But if, if I don't do them works, don't believe me. But if I do, then believe the works. For they are the manifested Word, promise. Amen. Or if you just wake up to that minute. You see, the Word itself identified who He was. And He said, who can condemn me of sin? In other words, who can show me that my life and my works don't fulfill exactly what Messiah should do? Amen. Nobody can say nothing. For He was. And He had faith to believe that whatever He said it would happen. Then He turned around and said, the works that I do shall you also. A little while the world sees no more, yet you shall, because I'll be with you even in you. Take no thought what you shall say, for it's not you to speak, it's that Father that dwelleth in you. He's one does the speaking. Yeah. 
And it's not me, it's the Father that dwells in me. He doeth the work. See what I mean? Now, the identification of a scripture, Christian, these words said Jesus, these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, how can you call yourself a believer of people and deny those words? How can you call yourself a believer and deny any of this word? You can't do it. You're not a believer. Therefore, signs can't follow it. Because you just accept what you want to believe and let the rest of it you want don't believe. It. But you've got to take the whole thing and believe. It. Amen. And when you truly believe, not make believe, but really believe, then these signs follow them that believe. Oh, could you compare Christians today with them Christians of long ago? How them disciples walked in the power of the Spirit, moved by the Holy Ghost to go. Just a prisoner, as I preached on the other night, a prisoner to the Word and will of God. He couldn't even move until God moved him. Wouldn't you like to see a church rise like that? Amen. It's going to. It's going back. It's, it's got to come. That's right. It's, go, it's on its road now, I believe. For the word identified. Identified himself, what he was, and the same word identifies us. See? If a man loves me, he keeps my commandments. And if he says he loves me, he keeps not my commandments. That's all of them. He's a liar. Amen. Uh, the truth's not even in him. Uh, you say, well, I don't believe God. Well, then that, you're just not a believer. That's all. Amen. If the Bible said so, that makes it right. Amen. That settles it eternally. Amen. What the Bible says is the truth. Notice. For well, he said to us, if ye abide me and my word in you, St. John 15, if ye abide me, see, and faith in him, if ye abide me and my word abides in you, then you, that's what you will. Now see, he knew who he was. Therefore, he had faith. Faith could produce when he knew what he was. Now, if ye abide me and my word in you, then you know who you are. Amen. That's what you will. It will be given to you. Wouldn't that be a wonderful night if everybody come to that prayer line and say, I am a Christian. I have no condemnation. I, I know that my heart condemned and not something tells me that the night the end of my suffering. Amen. That's, you're, going to, you're going to wait here with something. No matter how much you come in emotion, how much you do, it won't work until that perfect faith has manifested and identified itself in you as a substance. Amen. When it's there, then nothing's going to shake you from it. If, if you had cancer and the doctor told you yesterday that you'd be dead before Monday morning, all oh, your heart, your respiration's gone, the cancer eats you up, your bloodstream's become completely cancer, whatever it is, and something comes with this substance of this genuine faith, perfect faith, was made a substance in you, you'd laugh at that doctor's face. You'd be like old Elijah when he walked up and down before the idol and said, why don't you call a little louder and made his pursuing. <laughs> he knew what he was going to do because God had told him what was going to happen. He said, that's the God that answers the fire be God. They said, we'll take that proposition. And they poured water up on the altars and they, they cut themselves and they done everything and called old Baal, old Baal answer. Elijah just as calm as he could be. He said, call him louder. Said, said maybe he's pursuing, maybe, maybe he's on a fishing trip, maybe he's doing something else. He's out somewhere. They just, just made fun of him. Because he knew it was going to happen. Amen. Oh, watch when he cut everything in order. Walked out there and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. Never called him now his name, Jacob Shyster. He called him Israel, Prince with God. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of that Prince Jacob. Let it be known today that I'm your servant. And I've done this not at my desire, not at my makeup, but at your command I have did this. Your will. You told me what to do. You showed me these things to be here. Now, i poured the water upon the altar. I've done all these things according to your command. Now I'll be known. And when he said that, fire fell from the heaven. Amen. He was just as confident as going to fall because he had the substance. Why? The Word said so. Now, this same Bible is the same God's Word. Amen. And when you can receive the substance, that's perfect faith, substance that this promise that God made is yours. How do you feel, Brother Bram, when you stand there 
and you see people coming in different languages and things, are you afraid? No, sir. No, sir. He said so. I've never been afraid yet because he told me so. And I believe that it's true. Amen. If he told me tonight to go to the presidential graveyard and raise up George Washington, tomorrow morning I'd invite the whole world to come see it done. Amen. I'd say, bring every kid, get every critic you can and send him around to go see the glory of God. Amen. Set a chair over here where you sit down and rest for a while. <laughs> He'll be here just in a moment, as soon as I call. That night, another little boy in Finland, that day, brother, laying there dead. They lay in there for a half hour, mashed up, blood running out of eyes, nose, and ears. His little legs broke up in his little stockings, his feet the, out to the end of his stockings, his shoes gone. I looked and I thought that ought to be that boy. I said, say, let's look in the back of that Bible, Brother Moore. We got Brother Lee and Brother Moore, look back there, and it shall come to pass, saith the Lord. Oh, my. There will be a, a land worth a lot of evergreen growing. Rocks will be lapped together. A little boy with a crock haircut, little panty waist buttons up here, and his feet, his stockings pulled up high. He'll have brown eyes. They'll be turned back. He'll be killed in an automobile accident. But you lay your hands up on him, and he'll come back to life. There was right on there. There he lay. <laughs> Just waiting the word. I said, this boy isn't alive in a couple of minutes from now, then I'm a false prophet running out of Finland. But if he is alive, fall on your faces and repent. Hey, Amen. I said, death, you can't hold him. I call for his Amen. spirit according to the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And up he jumps. Amen. Right. Oh, Faith, see, took a hold. God said so. There it is. Now, that's, that's God speaking in this day through vision. Yes. But this, if that vision was contrary to this, that would be wrong. Amen. This is more than the vision. Amen. If any vision is contrary to the word, leave it alone. Amen. It ain't of God. God don't contradict his own word. So if this word told you something and you can have the same confidence, then what's going to happen? There's nothing. If it says, they shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Well, brother, if faith, that perfect faith got a hold of that, you'd, when you pass by this prayer line, you'd be jumping and shouting on you when you left here. It's over. And it's over. It's all over. It's finished. If you had a request in your heart and believe that when that prayer was made for that, it was going to be answered, there is nothing. It's good. That's what's going to happen. Like the woman with the blood issue. Jesus had perfect faith. He, he had it. And it come because he was the Word. And you become the Word. You become the Word as you receive the Word. If he abides in me, Amen. my words in you. My words, which this Word abides in you, then ask what you will and it will be done for you. See? If you say to this mountain, be moved, and don't doubt, but believe in what you've said, then you shall have what you've said. When you pray, believe that you receive what you ask for, and you shall have it. It'll be given to you. Time, space, nothing else will ever change it. You know it's done. It's already, it's already over it. Now what? Now, and he said to us, if you abide me in my word, and you St. John, you can ask what you will, and it'll be done. Then, recognize your position in the Scripture as a believer. See? You've got to recognize your position as he recognized his position. Yeah. Is not it written that Christ shall come and what all Christ will do? He said to Theophis and them that morning, isn't it written in the Scripture that they'll have to, that uh, he must suffer and then be killed and raised the third day? He said, why are you so slow of understanding? They thought, my, this man speaks a little different from other men. Come to find out, when they got into the end, it was him. Yes. See, their eyes were withholding from him. See, they know that he kept laying to that scripture, and they know it was him. Now, you must believe what you ask for. If you are a believer, recognize yourself as a believer. Recognize that these things are for you. If there's condemnation in your life, straighten that first. Amen. Amen. See, if you got condemnation in your eyes, you might have Oral Robertson. And a dozen more people who had faith to come here and pray over you and jump up and down and pour all over you by the gallons, it, it still, it, it won't move. Now try it. What falls off from all those meetings that I catch them in the prayer line? You hear it say, you was prayed for before. A man with dark hair, kind of big fella, big jaws, uh, or Roberts. And that was at a certain city called certain, certain. Yes, that's right, see. 
he was prayed for by such and such a man. See, like that? But here is your, here's your trouble. See? Go make that thing right. Go out there and confess that sin to your husband, to your wife. Go do this thing. It'll never do you any good, no matter who you're prayed for, until you make that right. Condemnations in your heart, and God will not come into that heart condemned. See? God don't dwell in that. You've got to make it right. Then when you do, you must have faith. If everything's right, you must have faith and believe it. Don't be afraid. In the book of Job, it says here, Job feared. And what he feared, it actually happened. What brought it is fear. That's what made it happen. His faith would have kept him from it. But his fear brought him, brought it to him. He was scared it was going to happen. And it did happen. Now, if he had known it wouldn't happen, it wouldn't happen. See what I mean? If you're afraid when you come by the prayer line, maybe I just haven't got the faith sufficient. It'll never happen. Don't worry. <laughs> but if you know it's going to happen, it'll happen. See? See, it's a substance. It's something. Job had a fear that these things would come up on him, and they did. If you have a fear that your disease is going to leave you, or won't leave you, it won't. If you have a faith that it will, you ask any medical doctor. The first thing he'll try to get you to do is have confidence in the medicine he's giving you. If you haven't got no confidence in it, you better leave it alone. See? Sure. What is it, Aunt? It's faith that does the healing. Amen. Right. It's faith that does it all the time. Peter, he was doing all right until he got scared. The Word told him he could walk on the water. He scared first. He thought it was a, a ghost. And he said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come to you on the water. He said, come on. <laughs> now, that's just the same as James 5, 14. Same as Mark 16. The same God said it. He said, come on. And so he started walking. He got all right. Got down out of the ship. Started walking on. There's a storm on the sea, you know. Great white cap waves. Bigger than these hills around here. The foam breaking on top of them. Terrific. Maybe 15, 20 feet foam. White caps breaking. And that was a terrific thing for him to ask. If it be you, Lord, see, it looked like a, they looked like a shadow or spirit. He said, if it's you, bid me come to me on the water. And Jesus said, come on. And he stepped down and said, it's the Lord on this wall. But when he got his eyes on the wave, he got scared. What come in his mind? First thing, yeah, I'm going to walk because the Word said for me to walk. And the next thing he looked at is, uh, well, he looked at his senses. He looked out there and seen how big them waves was, and he got scared. And when he did, down he went. <laughs> See? What he feared happened. What he believed happened. When he believed he could walk, he walked. When he believed, got scared in his belief, then his substance left him. See? He still professed his faith, but he didn't have the substance. The yeah, substance that went right on the top of that white cap and went right on to him. Yeah, if he had this perfect faith. See, but he didn't have it. He thought he did. He did it first. He's willing to venture right out. Why, the Lord told me to do it. It's got to happen. So he just steps right down the boat and takes off. Amen. He never thought about the, 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 the waves, how contrary they was. He never got that in his mind. And when you get to thinking, well, now, wait. You know, I've been sick so long. I, 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 stop. He just might as well go back to the boat. See? See? <laughs> but when you quit thinking about that. Abraham considered his, not his own body now dead. Neither the dead is the stale's womb. He didn't think about that. He didn't even consider it. It wasn't even brought into to understanding. He didn't even consider it all. He just considered what God said. And he went on. As long as Peter did that, he walked. But Jesus lived in a world that no one knew about. He was an odd person. He lived in a world of perfect faith in the perfect God in which he was. If we lived in a perfect faith of a Christian of what we are, we would be a mystic to the world. Yeah. The people wouldn't understand you. You'd walk in the Spirit. What the Spirit said you would do, what it forbids you not do, then the people get to say, there would be a, a mystic person to them. That's the way it is to all believers. They're mystics. The people don't understand because they live in a world to themselves. Amen. Jesus lived in a world that nobody else could touch. The disciples couldn't understand him. When he spoke to them, 
They say this, man, they say, what? Well, you, you're talking riddles. We, we don't understand this. How can this be? See, they wasn't in the world that he lived in. See, they couldn't understand him. Nobody could understand him. And so when a man lives by faith and walks by faith, I mean substance faith, he is isolated from the entire world and becomes a new creature in Christ. There, now you're getting into bride material. <laughs> you're getting into rapture condition now. That means for each one of us. Amen. Help us, help us, Not just the pastors. Deacons, trustees. That means for the laity. Amen. Every individual walks in a world God alone. You're baptized into this kingdom. And there's nobody in there but you and God. See? He gives the orders and you pack them out. Whatever he says, there's not a shadow of doubt nowhere. You walk right on. If the Lord says this, there's nobody in the world can talk you out of it. You go right on into the kingdom. Now, you're coming into perfect faith, perfect perfection that cannot fail. That faith never fails. Yes, he was a mystic to them with his perfect faith, and so is it now with those who have perfect faith or are mystic to others. We are taught to resist the devil and he will flee from us. Now, to resist is to just simply turn down. And just resist him. That is, just walk away from him. God said a certain thing, no matter what he's trying to tell you, you don't even listen to him. Yeah, your ears are deaf to anything else but what the Spirit says. See, he that has an ear that listens, see what the Spirit says unto the churches. The one that's got the listening post that catches what the Spirit says to the churches. See, what Satan says, well, now this can't, that don't have nothing to do. Well, if you teach that to the denomination, that don't have nothing to do with it. It goes right on just the same. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You know, in the Bible, it's always constantly saying that to him that has faith, to he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Yeah. See? He that has wisdom, let him count the numbers of the beast. All these different things, he that has, let him tell it to the rest of them that they might have. Yeah. And that's about faith we're talking about now. Faith that you've got to have, that perfect faith. That faith that says yes. There's nothing you say no. When God says yes. See? When he says yes, it's yes. Nothing else can ever take it from him. With his perfect faith, he was very strange. And the devil didn't stay around him very long. We got it in the lesson this morning. When he come with that great big uh, fluff of, of intellectual conception, he fluffled up against Jesus there. When he come, we found out he hit a 10,000 volt line. And brought him right back again. <laughs> yes, sir. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Yes. You got a shock then. You come a little softer the next time. One said, now you're a great man. You puff yourself up here and be somebody. to get behind me, Satan. Amen. Oh, my. What he meant. Now I shall not tempt the Lord thy God. He, he proved himself unto Satan that he was the Lord God. Amen. For it is written, thou shall not tempt now, if Satan didn't know that that was the Lord God, he said, wait a minute, you're not that person. But he knows better than the Amen. Bedi Kazee. He knows what ground to stand on. He said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And that's who he was. Amen. And Satan knows better than to say that because Jesus' works had already proved that he was the Lord thy God. Notice. Now, another. Perfect faith is a master of all circumstances. Perfect faith masters all circumstances. No matter what it is, it masters it. Now just watch. When you believe anything, do anything, and you've got faith in what you're doing, no matter what the circumstances, that don't have one thing to do with it. See? It masters that circumstance. If it's in a, a room of sickness, and the Lord's revealed that this certain thing's going to happen, you just speak it and go on. Uh, da, da. Just don't ask any questions. It's already over. Just keep going. See? It Amen. masters all circumstances. Amen. Well, if you do this, uh, uh, so and so sort of do uh, that. See, it already got it mastered. See, faith believes that God will work it out. I don't know how to go do it, but to do it anyhow. See, it masters all circumstances. And faith and love is relation. Because you can't have faith unless you've got love. Because your faith is in a God who is the very essence of love. Yes. Faith and love works together. Here, just like a young couple. You take a young man, young woman, 
And they, lo- they fall in love with one another. And as they go along and begin to know one another more, their hearts just begin to beat as one. See? They're, 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 yes, they're not husband and wife, but their love binds them together. And they have confidence in one another. Now, if they really love one another, really love, and you know that this girl loves you and, and she knows that you love her, you've got confidence, faith in one another. You've got faith in one another. If you didn't, you better not marry her. Notice you've got to have faith. And you separate them and put one extreme south and one extreme north. They still that love for each one another no matter where they're at. They're just as true to one another as they can be. Because they love one another. And if you love the Lord, it's not trying to dodge hell, but you love the Lord, then you have faith in God. And if you love Him, like a, a young girl just happened here in Louisville not long ago, a woman... She was, uh, she has been a Christian for many years, but her husband had just fell in love. She fell in love with this man. He had been a Christian a couple of years. And so they got married. They loved and had confidence in one another. And they got married. And so the woman said to the man, said, Hubby, it must be hard on you. You're just a young Christian. You've had so much to go through with drinking, is what it was. Said, you've had so much to go through with it. Said, I know you're about to be tempted awfully hard. And said, I want you to know one thing now. Now, if you happen to fall, if you happen to, to fall into temptation and uh, is overcome, don't stay away from home. You come on back. You come right here because I'm going to be right here waiting for you. And I'm going to help you pray through again until you get victory. I'm going to stay with you. Because when I married you, I married you because I loved you. No matter what you are, I still love you. Two days after that, he was eating his lunch with the fellows down in the boiler room. He was telling them about, so now, how could a man ever do anything wrong when somebody tells you like that? See? There you are. How, how could you trespass that confidence? And when we were sinners, alienated without God, in the world, in that muck of mud as I talked about this morning, God come to us. Amen. God sought you. You never sought God. No man can come to me except the Father draws him first. And God came down in that muck what you were and sought you out and brought you out. That ought to create a perfect love. Look what you were. And look what you are. What did that? Somebody that loves you. Can't you have faith in what he's promised you then? Real genuine love will create a confidence in His Word. He caught me when I was nothing. I'm still nothing. But I'm in His hands. He caught me. And He loved me when I was unlovable. He loved you when He was unlovable. But He changed you. It's like the colored sister said that time in her testimony. She said, I'm I'm not what I ought to be. And I'm not what I want to be. Then I'm not what I used to be. She knows she comes somewhere. Amen. Something happened. And that's the way it is. If God, when I was an alien from him, so loved me till he stooped down to get me and picked me up, that gives me confidence that he wants to use me. Yeah. He's got a purpose in doing it. Yeah. He's seen something in me. He's seen something in you. He had a reason to save you. Yeah. Look at the people done saved today. Look at the men he could have tucked beside you. Yeah. But he took you. Amen. 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 No one can take your place. Amen. You're in God's economy. Amen. No one can do it. That's his love to you. Then won't your love reach right back to him? And there's a love affair. No matter what the situation is, it's circumstances, it's governed by this love and creates faith. Amen. That God loves you and you love God and you love one another and, and that brings the faith. All right, then it can't, it can't keep from uh, uh, bringing out just exactly what God promised it would do. Now watch. Perfect faith is pure, just as pure as love is. See, now when you love somebody and you, got, you love your husband or you love your wife, now there's no need of anybody telling you you don't do it because you do do it and you know you do it. 
Now, if I ask you, uh, how can you, you prove you do it? Well, I prove it by the way I live to him. See? I'm a true, honest wife. I'm a loyal, honest husband. And that proves to me that I, that I love my wife or I love my husband. See? That your life proves what you are. The same thing Christianity does. Amen. See? Your faith, you have confidence in one another. It's pure. And it's something real that you can't show it to somebody else, yet you've got it. And your actions prove it. And when you've got pure, unadulterated faith like your love is to your companions, then you prove it by the way you act. Amen. You ain't complaining no more. You know it's done. You just walk along. No matter what the thing looks like, what anybody else says, you know what's happening. Amen. You know that it's finished. Just as well as you know you love your husband. As well as you know you love. See, love and faith has to go together. They're kin folks. They love. Love produces faith. When Satan tempts us, we are to resist him in a perfect faith in a perfect word, like Jesus did. Yeah. The word of God is perfect. Yeah. We're to have perfect faith in this perfect word and resist faith. Yeah. I will hurry just as quick as you can. By his faith, in, in his word, we he conquered, we can conquer anything, both death, hell, and the grave. We know that God is God. That perfect faith in God's perfect word, he conquered everything that he come in contact with. Death cannot even stand in his presence. Right. Sickness cannot stand in his presence. Flowing from him is like rivers of virtue going out constantly. Virtue going from his garment. These people laid in his shadow, stepped, put their finger on his garment and was healed. When that woman down there, then everybody wanted to touch his garment. Because they see that there was virtue going from him constantly. Flowed like rivers. There he was, walking. Walking in a word of perfect faith. <laughs> because he was the word. And now, if ye abide in me, through him, he brought the word to you. And my words abide in you, then walk in the same kind of a way. Virtues flowing from you. The rivers of God's fountains of blessing just flowing out to the people. See what I mean? And you're not bluffing it. You're not imagining it. It's actually taking place. And you see it. If you just imagine that, don't do any good. But if it's really there, it really happens. Now notice. See? By it. When he stood, and he said, if you destroy this body, this temple, I'll raise it up again in three days. Yeah. Why? He was just as satisfied he'd do that because the scripture said that he would do it. The Messiah, I'll not leave his soul in hell, neither I'll suffer my holy one to see corruption. A prophet, who the word comes to, had said that would happen, and he knew he was that person. Yeah. And when the Jesus himself said the prayer of faith shall save the sick, or they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, if you must have the same perfect confidence that when hands of they know me, I shall recover. Yes. Amen. Because he said so. Amen. He said, you destroy this body. And I'll raise it up because he knowed he was Messiah. I'll not suffer my Holy One to see corruption. He knowed he was the Holy One. Neither will I leave his soul in hell. He didn't. He knew he'd do it. He had confidence that he was there to conquer both death and hell. He said, destroy it if you wish to. And I'll raise it back again in three days. Oh, my. Well, I have power to lay my life down, or I have power to take it up again. Yes. He knows who he was. Yes. You're a Christian. You have rights to any redemptive blessing that Jesus died for you. Yes. For that. It's all yours. It's already paid for. You just have to believe it. Not imagine it, but believe it. And know that it's yours. And you can possess it. Oh, that's a conquering faith. No. Uh, he knew it would happen before he could predict that it would happen because he knew it would happen. And whatever he predicted comes to pass. Now watch. Whatever he said, God honored what he said. Think of that. Whatever Jesus said, God brought it to pass. So he knew his words were God's words. Now look, that same scripture comes right back into us again. If ye say to this mountain. Oh my. 
I, I just let that soap you still there, you see, because we're going to have a prayer. We dismiss the congregation to pray for the same. <laughs> the ones that want to, have to go. Look, he knew that he pleased God. He knew that there was nothing on his side. God had already testified, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. This is my beloved son in whom I'm pleased to dwell in. It's the day of his baptism. I'm pleased to make my abode in here. There's no condemnation to him at all. Now when the same God comes to you and is pleased to dwell in you, pleased to honor your word, what your decision is, what was Joshua's decision? Stand still, son! And it stood there. Amen. Sure. What was Moses' decision? Have it stick on a, a river like that and call for it to open and open. See, whatever you ask, and if you stay to this mountain, be moved and don't doubt. See? In your heart, but believe that what you've said will come to pass, you can have what you say. That puts you back in the Word. Now, that's not skim milk. <laughs> it puts you back. I know it goes jumps right over top of you, ain't it? See? Because it can't anchor. But real genuine faith catches that right now. I've seen it, friends. Here's this Bible laying open before me. I've seen it happen. And I know it's the truth. I know God in heaven knows that I might not live through to finish this message. But I, I know that it happened. I've seen it myself. I'm a witness of that word being fulfilled. And I know it is the truth. Amen. Say it. And stand there and see the Creator bring a living creature into existence. Right in presence of your eyes. Yes. And shake your head and wonder. And then look around and see Him bring another one just exactly like it. Because you said so. Yes. And turn over here and say there will be another one there. And look and there it is. Yes. Ah. Now that's the truth. Amen. Amen. Oh, where should we be? There is perfect faith. Yes. No vision. Just speak the word. Yes. Never saw the squirrel. He just said the scripture, what it was, and speak it. And don't doubt it. But what you say, it'll be there. And I uh, took God at his word and it was there. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's just as powerful and friends as your pastor. That's just as powerful as it was when Joshua stopped the sun. Amen. Because the sun was already there. The elements was moving and he stopped the movement. But this, he brought something there that wasn't there. Amen. He created. Amen. I'm so God to be acquainted with a God that can take the dust of the earth someday without anything and call me back to life again. That's the After it's been planted in the grave. Oh, my. There it is. My faith looks up to thee. Thou Lamb of Calvary. Amen. If you say and don't doubt, but believe that what you said, you shall have what you said. See? Believe that it happened. David in the Psalms spoke of it. And with it, he took his power and he ministered to others. Not only did he keep it to himself, but he ministered to others by it. Also saved others, even to the uttermost. And he can do the same thing now. And promised the same faith to the believers in his word. In John, uh, John 14, 12, he said, so in Mark 16, and also in Mark 11, 23, we just read. Now what? Now... He has appeared to us in the same form that He did to them in the Old Testament and in the same as He did in the New Testament and is showed by the same word, the same Christ. Yes. And I declare to you that Christ is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. The, the word Christ means the anointed one. Just a person that's anointed, that is the Christ. The anointed one. How many know that's true? That's the, uh, the anointed one. There will be a man that will be anointed. Anointed with what? The Bible said in Acts 2 that Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, anointed with the Holy Ghost, went about us and done great works and things. See? 
that God manifested through that he was in this man. And now we become anointed with that same spirit. Anointed. Messiah. Messiahs of the last days. To shine forth the resurrection of Jesus Christ. To show that he is not dead. But in the form of the Holy Ghost, he's in his people. Moving among his bride yes. with a love affair to her, pouring out into her himself. They are becoming one for the wedding. Yes. So, and the same sign promised by the same God in the same word is making its same manifestation. Yes. Amen. There's nothing left for us to do but believe it. Amen. And believe it, it's a substance. Amen. And that creates a perfect faith. Just think how, how numb we are. Just think of that just a minute. Now let's see. Has he done all things well? Has he ever told us anything but what happened just exactly the way he said? Hasn't he performed and hasn't a great pillar of fire been among us and done just exactly like he promised to do? Haven't we seen it? Haven't science taken it? Haven't been predicted what would happen? Go right there and have it, even in the papers and magazines, pack it right back and show it when it's told you months before it happened. Yeah. Has he done just exactly the way he did in the Old Testament yeah. and the New Amen. Testament? Amen. And just exactly the same yeah. one? Amen. Amen. The same Holy Spirit comes as the discerner and the Word of God, which is quicker and sharper than a two-edged sword, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the yeah. heart. Isn't that right? Yeah. Isn't that the same God? Now that same one, it's not a stranger off somewhere else, he sure. He sure does this to create a perfect faith. I feel him. I know he's here now. I know that his spirit is here. I know that he knows all things. Amen. Amen. And I know he wants to, to do something. He's been doing something to, to create this perfection of faith in the people. Yes. Are we going to walk into eternity like it was in the days of Noah and ate so saved? Yep. Are we going to come like Lot with three out of Sodom? Yep. Are we going to come like in the days of John the Baptist with six believers? Let us believe. Yep. For his works is perfect. They're manifested daily and perfectly before us. Showing that he is the word. The Word, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, says the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, of, of, and he, uh, even a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. Think of that. The Word of God is that, a discerner of the intents of the heart. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul. And of spirit, and of the joints, and of the mind, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. The Word Amen. made flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Word operating in human flesh by physical signs, by material signs, by scriptural signs, perfectly to bring to you a perfect faith for a perfect rapture. Amen. Amen. Can't we look at it? Not a mystic, the devil has put everything in the world before he tries to make it, you keep you from believing it. He'll bring in a meeting and try to throw everything he can in front of you. Shake it away from you. The Bible says, rise and shake yourself. Pinch yourself. His spirit is here. He knows you. You've got one thing to do, and that's to believe it, to accept it. He knows. You believe that? Yeah. He knows what's in you. He knows what you are. He knows what you're desiring. He knows what you have need of. Jim, you believe he knows about that baby? Took his fever for you last 105. You believe you heal it? Come on in today. He'll leave it. Hallelujah. I just looked over there and seen him before they left home once again. Well, that's true. 
Miss Lingham, you believe God will give you victory over that diabetes? Amen. That is a woman sitting beside you. Don't know you, but the spirit's upon her. What she's worried about, so look, she's got a child that has to have an operation for an eye or something. Yeah, she's in Chicago. Uh, quicker, more powerful than a two-edged sword. A deserter. What is the word? Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. Certainly. There's a lady sitting right in the next row there just had an eye operation. Didn't do too well, but you, you believe it, you'll get, you'll, get, you'll get all right. You believe it? All right. She's yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Mr. Peck and Paul, it isn't for you, it's for this grandson sitting here. You're praying about it, but you believe that God will make it well? You believe God can tell me what's wrong with it? Doctors don't know. No, that's right. Swelling, lungs, that's right. you got a blood condition. Correct? You're kind of confused about whether you're going to go to school or not. Quicker, more powerful than a two-age sword. I see a woman losing her food. She's somewhere. Let me get her face somewhere. Yes, yeah, sitting back there. Her name's Miss Llewellyn. She believed with all her heart. That stomach trouble will leave you. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's a lady sitting right across from her, looking at me right now, sitting on the end. She's wearing glasses. She's got arthritis. It's in your left hand. It was. It ain't now. Hallelujah. Yes, if you believe. What about that little baby right back there? It comes from Ohio. It's got cancer in the eye. Do you believe God will heal it? You look. Know? You believe it. That's from Ohio. You believe now that God will make it well? You live. What is it? More powerful, quicker than hey. This is the lady here. Something struck her. She's got trouble in her shoulder. That's right. Is that right? All right. Believe it and leave. See? The Word of God! A deserter of the thoughts and the intents of the heart! Now, there's no prayer cards in this building. There's nobody that prays you out any prayer cards. We don't use them here. Let's just have to keep in order. You want to be prayed for? How many wants to be prayed for? While the Word is manifested through flesh. Hallelujah. Let this roll here. Get out and come down this way, right down this aisle here for a study here. You that wants to be prayed for. Then after that, I want this aisle here to come down behind us. Then after this, you let this aisle over here come. Quicker, more powerful. Amen. Could a two-edged sword do that? No, sir. But the Word of God can do it. Amen. Why? It is the Word of God. Now, you believe it? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Where's that sister from down uh, in Tennessee? Uh, sister Unruh, uh, Downey. The great physician now is near. I never forget that in Fort Wayne that night when that little Amish girl or Dunkard was sitting there playing that. The great physician now is here. Near that little boy with the heel. She jumped up and the Holy Ghost fell on her. Her pretty hair fell down across her shoulders and the piano never missed the key. The great physician now is near the sympathizing Jesus. Supernatural power moving on piano keys playing the great position now here. Look, are you, you believe? I remember when you now if you don't believe it, don't come. Now the Bible or the Bible is somewhere in this. I'm gonna believe it. When I the Bible says these signs shall follow them and believe. Get to lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Put your hands on one another that's believers. Just reach over and cross your hands on each other.
This is where we're going to find out something in a few minutes. I see just how advanced my church is on what we believe. Amen. See just how advanced the people are. How they're ready to take the sword and walk out the front line. Amen. And say, I challenge you, Satan. I challenge you. You can't. You can't make me disbelieve anymore. Amen. What are these things done for? So that people will believe. Yes. Amen. It's the word. It's what that shows that I'm preaching you the truth. The word. The word made flesh. Made flesh in you. Made word. Made life in you. Made life in me. See. The great physician. All right. Let us bow our heads. Lord Jesus. The great physician now is near. You are the physician. I have preached your word, and your word has declared that you are here. That you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. That you cannot fail. You never fail this law. And now let each one of these that has your hands on each other, may the blessings of God rest upon them. And as we come, they are believers. And as we anoint them with all the pastor and I, and pass them through this line. May each one pass through here with faith to believe Amen. To know that the very God of heaven stands present. May each one shake themselves. Can they only this one time, Lord? Just let them let it stroke down, Lord, one time. Open their eyes, Lord, that they can see what is going on and not be blind, staggered. But to see the reality of the presence of a resurrected Jesus Christ. Grant it, Lord, through Jesus' name. Amen. I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ that you come not in this line unless you feel that you got that perfect thing. Because you're only taking their time, somebody else's time. Don't you do it. And by as long as I've preached to you, have I ever said one thing to you but what has happened? Amen. Exactly. The Lord did that. He did it not for me, I believe. He did it for you that you might believe that what I'm telling you is the truth. Now you believe it. It'll be all right. And it, you'll get well. When you come by here, drop your unbelief right in this uh, spiritual pocket down here. You won't see it, but it's there. When that oil touches you, drop your unbelief right there. Amen. Deposit it there and walk away with perfect faith that you're well. Will you do it? The Lord bless you then. All right? I'm going to ask somebody who can lead songs. Just where's that great preacher, brother? That, uh, what's his name? Cap. Brother Cap. Is he in the line? What's that? Come here, Brother Cap. And stand there and sing congregation while we all pray. The great physician now is here as they lead it. Each one sing now with your heart. Don't just sing, say, I'm going to sing. Great physician now is near. Except the eyes of Jesus. Make the truth in large and chair. Except the eyes of Jesus. Oh, oh, my. All your job. All your toes. Amen. Your spirit alert. Yes, the great physician now is here. Except the eyes of Jesus. He proves that he's here. I believe him. Amen. All right. Let, the, let those you have faith come forth. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on it over here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I can do this. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay hands on it
God of the hands upon the baby, so shall it be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, heal. In Jesus' name, heal my brother. In Jesus' name, heal his brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal our Lord, our Lord. In Jesus' name, heal our sister. In Jesus' name, heal our sister. In Jesus' name, heal my brother. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my brother. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. Jesus, heal my little brother. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for you. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my brother. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, 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 heal my brother. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal my sister. Jesus' name, heal my brother. Heal my sister. Heal my brother. In Jesus' name. Heal my sister. 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 In Jesus' name, heal my sister. In Jesus' name, heal our brother. In Jesus' name, heal our brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister. In Jesus' name, grant his request. In Jesus' name, heal my brother. Praise God. Deposit your unbelief. Come believing now. God will grant it. I'm believing it. And God will grant it. I believe it. I'm using all the faith I know how. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. In Jesus' name, heal my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. Now on this side, Brother Neville. The other down. Hey. A trophy of God's grace. This is man's supposed to die that we can do it. In the name of Jesus Christ, God. You must love him, Father, for you your great name for him. I lay my hands upon him in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Lord God, upon his precious wife, I lay my hand on her. Amen. Is that all of them? Now, let's bow our heads now. Amen. The great Say well, for so I am. If I, your pastor, have been identified by Jesus Christ Amen. that I do his work, then believe my word. Amen. By acting this act of faith by laying hands upon you, I have condemned the disease and affliction that's about you. Amen. Believe that. So shall you have your request, regardless of what it is, for all things are possible to them that believe, and when you pray, believe that you receive what you ask for, and I truly believe that I receive it, and in my heart, 
I accept every one of your healings. Amen. I accept it. That it's done. I believe it. I believe it with all the sin. Also, with my hands up on the handkerchief laying here, I've been watching it close. I believe that they'll produce just exactly what the people request. Amen. I, I believe it. This is coming into that third book. Amen. Amen. I, I'm believing this. And I want to ask you a sincere question, you that passed through the prayer line. Can you actually believe and feel now that there is something happened in you since you've had hands laid on your legs? Amen. There he is. This is what we've waited for. Now, this is not. This is just starting to bloom now. See, just started. But I did this for a purpose. I did this for a purpose. I'm working out something. See, taking this charge of faith and going right back to it again and come in. See, to kind of raise faith in a bracket where you never noticed it that way before. Not a faith, but a perfect faith. Fill it up in here and watch a perfect God with a perfect heart keep a perfect promise. By his perfect word, which is sharper than a two-edged sword, yes. and the discerner of the thoughts of the heart. Amen. What, we're coming now to the perfection because the people have to come to this in order for the rapture. Amen. That's what's holding the way right now, is waiting for that church to come in to that perfect rapture faith. I'm uh, looking for it. It means a lot of shaving down for me. It means a lot for you. But together, we'll make it by the grace of God. We're all Amen. 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 The God. 
And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Word is sharper than a two-edged sword, even a discerner of the thoughts and the intent. What you come here for, what's your purpose of being here, who you are, identifies Jesus Christ to be Messiah. And today it identifies him of being the same Messiah yesterday, today, and forever. The great physician who is here who said, These signs shall follow them as believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. And if you say to this mountain, Be moved, and don't doubt in your heart, but can believe, if he can create squirrels. who has no way at all or nothing there to believe. It's my own faith that goes and does that. Uh, My faith in what he challenged me to ask. He challenged me to ask it. And I received his challenge in obedience to his word. I asked it and it appears. God in heaven knows that's true. Can he also heal the sick? If he can lift me with a faith up this way even for the people. Even if they can't climb to that bracket, if they can't do it, he can use my faith. Amen. He can lift me to that place. And I'm climbing for you. I'm believing for you. And I'm speaking for you. I'm your brother, standing as your brother, an intercessor, trying my best to hold you before God. And I'm standing here right before the white throne now. And taking that, pointing my finger to that bloody sacrifice there and speaking through his name that it's done. It has to happen. It has to happen. You know it's happened. I know it's happened. So do you know it's happened. And it's so. It's right. Amen. The carol Oh, Jesus. unto us in thy name. <laughs> Sweetest name on mortal tongue. The devil that, that raises the dead, that it heals the sick, that cleanses the leper, that casts out devils, that makes Christians. There's not another name under heaven. I live in it, baptized in it, believe it, Amen. worship in it. Amen. Oh, let me become part of it. Let me lose my own self and find it, Lord, in me. That name called Jesus Christ, the anointed Messiah, that I might press my way through the mud of unbelief to reflect the beauty of Jesus Christ to say yesterday, today, and forever. God bless you now. When you get back here next Sunday, give a testimony of how you were healed. What happened this week? Why don't you see what happens? It's over. Amen. Why, you know, he told me to say it, and I said it. Amen. Roll it, it. It's over. I believe it. Now, the pastor. Hallelujah. Just a moment. Is not my word real in the hearts of those to whom I will reveal it, saith the Lord thy God? Yea, and is not my word sharp even as I have spoken this night, night, yea, sharp as a two-edged sword? Yea, I say unto thee, my arm is not sharpened that I cannot heal, and yea, my ear is not dull that I cannot hear thy prayer, saith the Lord thy God. 
Yea, look ye unto me, and know that that shall be performed which I have promised unto thee, saith the Lord thy God. Yea, know ye, yea, that the truth was spoken unto thee this night. Yea, and the miracles that I have promised thee, yea, are already taking place. Yea, they are coming to pass, saith the Lord thy God. Know ye, and let this word be confirmed in thy heart, that I have dealt with thee, and shall deal with thee, saith the Lord. Blessed be the name of God. Let us raise our hands and worship him in we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As a believer, did you notice the distance and how much of the message was spoke and the rhythm it was spoken and what's the interpretation turned back to the same? Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. Watch what it was exactly with the message and confirming that the thing was the truth that he has already performed what he promised he would do. Amen. Watch the way that comes forth and watch the way this interprets. Watch how long he spoke and watch how many words he said. Amen. Amen. Just exactly. The Lord bless you till I see you again. Amen.